everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Araceli aka Chelly, and today on a Chelly's Mental Wealth episode, we're gonna be discussing what are the things that we need to look out for when a, someone is engaging in predatory behavior, aka abuse. This is a very touchy subject because warning, it is gonna trigger people who have been in, in those type of situations where you've been abused and it's gonna be triggering for this video. It is because it's, I mean, it's triggering for me whenever I see things. I have personal and I have professional experience when it comes down to sexual abuse and exploiting children and what are the things we should look for? What are the red flags? I'm extremely grateful that I attended, I think I attended about two training classes when I used to work for the, the nonprofit that I used to work for and that training taught me a lot about what predators look for. How is it easy for them? So I wanted to make a video dedicated to the things that I've learned personally and professionally. So hopefully I can educate anyone who's willing to listen, whether you're a, an adolescent, an adult, any age, at any age, if you want to know this and you want to be aware so that you can protect yourselves and if you want to teach someone about this stuff, you can forward them this video and say, hey, you know, this is where I got my information. If you don't believe me, watch this video. <laughs> or you can repeat what, I had, what I'm gonna mention and hopefully you can educate anyone who wants to learn. Now, let's address at least the small little elephant in the room. I've been wanting to talk about this more, especially because there's been a lot of victims coming forward about their experiences with a lot of men in the industry right now in the entertainment industry and it's very common we've been hearing this a lot especially over the me too movement which i'm extremely grateful for because i think it's important that we can we continue it you know and, and not end it it shouldn't stop it should keep going so that we can the victims could get more and more of a validation and their ability to even have a safe space to speak of uh, and not get shunned away or it's oh they want clout or this it's just it's important that we don't um invalidate nobody's experiences but this is one of the main reasons why i wanted to do it too is now that all this stuff is coming forward with chris dahlia and the allegations that are coming forward in regards to him and he admits that he has a problem and then with james charles and him admitting that he was sending nudes to an underage you know boy and him saying that you know he admitted that he was that he he didn't do enough research <laughs> to make sure that he wasn't crossing any illegal um, boundaries, right? Which to me, I didn't really I don't believe him. That's just my opinion because Corey Feldman has came forward multiple times already. I mean, on the news, the TV, personally on his YouTube channel, he has a YouTube channel, and and Corey has always been very vocal about that when he was in his environment when he was younger he says that there was predators everywhere so i just don't believe him that's just my opinion with that and it's unfortunate that they are not that a lot of brands are still working with him that people are uh, brands are not highlighting this and turning into something where we can empower victims There was an article that got recommended to me on Google that the creative director admitted that they engaged in, that they were, they did participate in the culture of racism and they are very regretful for it and they're ready to make a change. Now, they didn't vocalize this, but they got in an interview and they said what they said. And the reason why I'm bringing up Disneyland is because... So what I was trying to say here is that it's kind of hard for me to jump on board with Disney's brand still because it's they haven't really taken accountability about not firing people who are or have been engaging in SA towards children in their corporations. And it's just, they're not taking enough accountability by firing certain people that are still working for their Disney brand with certain Marvel productions allegedly and um specifically one director which i'm sure some of you have known about this where there's a few tweets that are on resurface yeah and and a lot of people there's a handful of people saying like you know this is wrong you guys know that he's behaved a certain way during set i don't understand why they continue to to work with this with this man um so i'm going to show a picture i don't remember what his name is but it's just really like i said it's really hard for me to jump on board with a, disney's brand when they still have not taken accountability with that aspect 
I appreciate that they've taken accountability about the racism and all that stuff, but yet again, they haven't taken accountability about the essay that's involved with a lot of people. Even with Demi Lovato, she came forward in her latest documentary talking about how somebody in um, during that time engaged in inappropriate behaviors with her. She expressed her concerns and she reported it and they didn't do anything about it. They just kept the person working there. So yet again, not taking accountability, that brand. So I can't be, I, I, I just can't support the brand just specifically because of that. And um, the way I used to, you know, and in regards to going to their annual pass holding and all that stuff, um, I spoke to my son about this. He knows how I feel. And uh, I think as he gets older, he's going to understand why I made this decision. And he understands that we're just going to go once in a blue moon because he's requesting it and hopefully he'll get over it soon. <laughs> and that's all I can say about that. People who are influencers will watch other companies to learn from there. Their PR moves, right? If you don't have a PR agent, you're obviously going to observe from other businesses and you're going to learn from them. And I used to always compare a lot of YouTubers bigger YouTubers to Disney and, and saying they're taking the Disney approach. They're ignoring us. They're just changing it, but ignoring us. They're not even acknowledging that they're engaging in this negative behavior. Chris Dahlia kind of did because he came forward and he admitted in a video and he says, yes, I have a, I have an issue. I had a problem with X, Y, and Z. And there's people that still support him and there's people that are not supporting him. And now with, and I don't know if he, any sponsorships have dropped, but it's the same situation with David Dobrik where sponsorships are coming forward and saying we do not align with this behavior. We're no longer going to work with him. I wish companies would do the same with James Charles. But to each tone, right? The only thing that, that as consumers we can do is not support companies who are supporting that behavior. Kind of like how I wasn't supporting Disney. The reason why I'm disappointed about brands still continuing to support James Charles is because... The reality is, is, is that times are changing, right? In regards to how predators get their pictures and how they can convince minors to just expose themselves, um, whether it's physically, emotionally, whatever it is, whatever they're trying to get from the minor and engage in essay behavior. Now, when we watched, when, if you watched The Open Secret, they talked about how a lot of people tend to use the headshots and they resell them on eBay. Surprised to find our own children's pictures were being sold on eBay. Just the regular headshots, not anything salacious, not even anything erotic. Our kids were not famous at all. They were working, but they were certainly not where anyone would care that their headshots were being sold on eBay. And yet it became clear that they were, and they were being sold for a lot of money. And you wonder, who, who wants my kid's picture for $300? Especially a, a printed picture that we'd send you for free. We started the process of investigating and we started to put together a matrix of the, the photographers and the sellers and who was doing what. We were very disturbed to find that they were really close to us, really, really close. How do I know or have people have investigated James Charles um, photos that have been sent to him uh, because I'm sure, yes, we've seen people come forward about, hey, he said this to me and I didn't do it. But what about the people that did fall for it? How many times did he do it? And is he using these photos allegedly for um, for the same reason as what we what we found out in the open secret? Is he utilizing these photos and flipping them and selling them and giving it to predators? Is he um, like what what is he doing? Is he collecting this? Is he is he because that to me makes sense. Like, wouldn't that be an organized crime? Uh, and, and this is an alleged, you know, this is an opinion. This is a theory as to like, you know, if he's not doing it, I'm sure there's other people that are doing it. Whether you're in middle, low, high class, it doesn't matter. It just makes sense to me that someone would try to get photos in that way to encourage minors. And um, because it's just... They don't know any better, you know, for from what what I'm going to talk about in the video as to why children and minors might end up sending photos without really thinking about what's going to end up be, be how that photo is going to be used if it's going to be resold. And, you know, it's 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 common. You know, we I saw this other clip. I don't know if people saw me post this on Instagram where this lady was in a nail salon and her daughter daughter felt really uncomfortable and because she realized that the nail technician was taking a video of of her and i don't know what part i don't know if she was taking videos of her toes her hands and they kept asking about her age 
and they thought it was weird so they ended up catching her filming it and she also saw that there was an older gentleman behind the camera so if like i said anyone can engage in this behavior so i just don't understand why brands have not questioned this and why they do not see they don't think that this is alarming and didn't question him or is there or i'm just curious is anybody investigating that have they investigated his phone have they investigated his snapchat how how many yeses did he get because we've seen how many no's he's gotten and that's just the ones that came forward we don't know if there's a lot of no's that just are too scared to come forward but how many yeses did he get and what did he do with those photos because someone investigate that so that's why it's really difficult for me to really support brands who are supporting James Charles, including uh, other celebrities and influencers. I, I don't understand it, you know? Maybe they're trying to frame him. You know, I'm trying to think positive in a sense of like, maybe they're just flipping it on him and maybe he's trying to do good in the industry um, versus bad, or maybe he is a part of the problem. I don't know. Uh, but from what I've seen and what I've known, while working in the while working in the mental health field and being exposed to clients who who've experienced SA and all the stuff that I researched and I learned at school, and uh, it's just my gut tells me I, I don't trust um, James Charles. That's just my gut, my opinion, and this is why I feel about that whole situation. What are the key things that you need to look for in order for you to be careful and catch someone or at least teach someone what to do when they're in that situation and also how to um, educate uh, children and teens so that they don't fall into those traps when adults are not around, how you can talk to your kids, all that stuff, right? Let's break down the, stere the, the, stereo, the stereotypes because... A person can be anyone, okay? They could be young, they can be old, they could be your family member, they could be your friend, they could be a teacher, they could be a coach, they could be a doctor, they could be a nurse, they could be uh, a coach at any capacity with any sports. This could be gymnastics, this could be swimming, this could be football, this could be soccer, any sport that you could think of. Any place where you will see children and teens, predators are around. This is a beach. We could talk about, if we talk about environments, where do predators like to hang around? Theme parks, beaches, kids events like meet and greets, <laughs> um, concerts where children tend to visit their favorite influencer or musician. Anything that involves kids, they will be there. They will even work with children. They would do anything and anything to get close to any child, okay? And they know who to pick. They know. They always pick a victim who doesn't really have a support system. And they know that because they've been studying it. They've been watching. They know how to pick the right children and they also, or teens. The biggest thing is low self-esteem. If they see that there's no parental, like, just caretaking, like, they realize, like, oh, this kid doesn't, like, their parents are always working, and sometimes it's because it's unintentional or intentional, we don't know, parents are just really busy working two jobs, three jobs, and their kids are kind of off to fend for their, for their own, and sometimes it's because of neglect, right, it's just parents, or caregivers may not care as much, so kids are just doing whatever, and they're more independent, which they're more susceptible and falling into traps of older adults or even just older teenagers that are gonna feed this love and attention that they're not getting at home. And a lot of the times these predators will be will side with the victim and say, oh yeah, your, your parents are, they don't know nothing. They don't know this. So they're in the victim's ear and trying to validate how they're feeling and how their parents are making them feel. So it detaches them from them and they're gonna trust their partner more than their family because they're there more. And it's not the family's fault, you know? It's like, technically, it's not fully their fault, but what I'm trying to say is that they're gullible in that sense, depending on the situation, you know? And that's why it's important for us to know about all these these things and these signs and always learning to build somewhat of a relationship with the adolescent, teen, and child. If you're a caretaker, whether you adopt, foster, or biological, it's important to have some type of relationship with your child because that will allow you to have these conversations and be able to check in and be like well how old is this person how did you meet them and then hopefully they don't get super defensive so that you can help them understand like this is pretty behavior like no one 
this age should be with you because right now you're not mature enough to handle this. And yes, there is that that argument where, well, a lot of younger women or girls want to be with an older man because a lot of younger guys are, they're just less mature. I don't know if I can actually agree to that because of the experience that I have working with multiple families, okay, with different ages, different demographics, different places and, 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 you know, in LA County, but different areas and cities, believe me, there's different cultures in different areas. It really doesn't really matter. It just doesn't. It just, it's deeper than that. I, I don't really believe that, that it's just corely that way. So the biggest, biggest thing is there's no stereotype. It could be anyone at any age. Be, can be close to you, may not be close to you. It could be anyone. And usually when they've been doing it for so many years, they keep getting better at it. They just do. They keep, if they get, get, get caught, they just know what to say and what to lie and how to turn it around and do that whole narcissist type of approach. So be mindful of that. And, and when we teach children and teens about that, then that's when hopefully they can catch that. But the most important thing is actually having a solid relationship with the child, teen, and adolescent. And they're going to be willing to listen and take in consideration over the suggestions and the things that you've learned in regards to predatory behavior. Because I can sit here and say, you got to say this, 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 and this to the child, teen, or semi-adult. And they may not listen to you because they just don't care because they you, you haven't built that relationship with, with that child. You just haven't. You just haven't. And then there's also there's that power dynamics too. Like let's say if the child is making more money whether it's like child labor or their own business and they're not paying for anything, then the child feels like, well, you don't need to tell me anything because I bring in the bread. You know, I pay the bills, mom. So you're not going to tell me nothing. Those power dynamics really hinder the ability for the parent to actually show and teach the child and teen. Yes, I know we don't have this great relationship, but what I'm telling you is the truth and, you, and, and I don't want you to get taken advantage of by this adult or semi you know whatever because it could be an eight-year-old and, and a six, 16 year old trying to be with an eight-year-old i've heard stories like that it's really appalling and and i just ugh. but going back let's bring it back we're gonna bring it back and now one thing that i do want to um at least highlight so that at least people who want to learn about how a predator will get into their head is especially boy on men or men on boy, boy on boy, men on men, whatever. Boys are just way more at risk of getting sexually abused because of the shame that comes with it. Because of a man doing that to you, it's shameful. They don't, they also feel like they're, no one's going to believe them, which is very common. And that's why predators now, from what the training that I'm, that I took, a few years back and they were saying that predators really go after boys more now than girls it still happens with girls but it's a lot easier to sexually abuse a boy because of that that layered factor that girls don't really have because i think like in society girls it's more acceptable for girls to eventually turn bi or or lesbian because you know we see girl on girl action all the time like they're kissing that's been shown to us in the 90s already so i think that's why with girls like they might get confused and they think like oh well it's normal when they're in a predatorial situation but with, with with boys if you don't really you're not really seeing that like a man and a boy kissing that's why i trip out on that the smiths like if you guys watch my last video i briefly talk about will smith kissing his son while he was getting interviewed and it was like a joke and all that stuff it was like force kiss you know and then could have been a parody i don't know but that confuses a child to think that it's okay for someone to forcefully kiss them especially if they're doing it forcefully when, without their consent and now let's go back to what is it that a predator might do or say to a child that will convince them to think that it's okay for them to be engaging in these sexual acts i saw the open secret and i wholeheartedly recommend for you guys to go see the open secret you can google it and find it in another website source because it is somewhat explicit um i would encourage you to watch it first and if you feel like your child is mature enough to handle the the video 
then watch it with them because it pretty much explains everything that I'm going to summarize right now. Because there is a scene where the victim is explaining to his predator what he did to him to convince him to engage in sexual acts with him. And one of the things that they do is they say, oh, this is normal. You know, this is how we teach children how to love in a different way. I'm just trying to teach you how to masturbate. That's what they say. And another thing, too, that a lot of people don't realize that women are also predators. We need to remove that idea that it's just men. Women, anyone, and at any gender can be a predator. Now, with women, I feel like it's still in society is not as shameful as when a man does it. And that's something we need to change. And it's also a lot more easier for a woman to be a predator. But that's what a woman will tend to do, similar as to what the man will say to the boy or the girl. It's so easy for a woman to do that to a boy. Like to say, hey, you want me to teach you? Hey, I'm, I'm your mom. That is oh, it's such an easy loophole to, to, to trick and throw off a child, like wait, and then they don't know what to do. So be mindful that that could occur, you know? And if someone comes up to you and tells you that that happened to them, the important thing is we validate. You can't discredit and say, oh, well, you know, it's that's not appropriate behavior. That's a sick loophole. So those are the things that you, people really kind of don't take into consideration that they will use as the first level of trying to touch the child or the teen. And now some of these predatorial behaviors could be a genetic and can also be learned behavior. A lot of these victims who have been sexually abused will not remember that they've been sexually abused. And then later on will have urges to want to hurt and physically, you know, sexually abuse other, other individuals. I think that when that happens, I wish that we can, okay, I don't want to say wish. I want to figure out a way where we can make people feel safe enough to talk about those urges because what if they don't remember that that occurred to them? Because a lot of victims, when they're really small, if you're five, six, or eight, sometimes your brain blocks it out. Like you have that deep preservation, the auto body experience, and you completely black it out and you have no memory. Excuse my language. You literally have no memory. And I think think that if we make a safer space for people who have these urges and they don't know where the fudge they're coming from and provide services to them so they can work towards it and break the cycle because it's it's learned behavior. A lot of it is conditioned learned behavior. That's why YouTube does what it does when it comes out to promoting certain videos to children. They're impressionable, moldy minds, you know, and I want to educate people on, on that end that that occurs a lot and it's confusing for the adult, especially if they feel like that's never happened to them and then they get these urges. Like, you just imagine how they might feel like, well, what the fuck's wrong with me? You know, like, why do I have these urges? You know, and if they don't have the support and the safe space for not to feel judged over it, then there's that, like, small little window where they're going to act on it. And then they can get themselves into bigger trouble and then, then now they have to be assigned to their, you know, that predator website. And when, when it could have been avoided, they could have gone to therapy and really talked it through and just kind of healed in that way. I also want people to not be paranoid because I went through that phase as a mom. I went through that phase as a worker. I literally didn't trust anyone. Like no one. Like no one. Like to a point where I would be like, you're a pedal, he's a pedal, they're a pedal, they're a pedal, they're a pedal, 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 pedal everywhere. And I had to just bring it back <laughs> and just be like, yeah, they are everywhere. And it's my responsibility to just teach people who are around me who are willing to listen about the signs and traps so they don't fall into them. And to teach them how to vocalize, how to advocate, how to motivate, encourage other people who maybe confide to them about any type of abuse that they've endured sexually or physically so that they can hopefully encourage them to file a report. Because it's always important for you to file a report. It just is. A lot of people think that it's not, but it is. It's important. Yes, I do believe that sometimes some police records might disappear, but that's what's important for you to keep your record. Keep your copy. Make a, 
keep your original make a copy take a photo because <laughs> now you know you can take photos and it'll stay exactly the same it's not going to fade off do a police report because having a trail helps eventually to end the predatory behavior or at least for people to know oh, okay they already know that we gotta watch out for that person now if they're a public figure but when they're a, a civilian who's not you know a lot of people don't know them it's more in a sense of like for legal legality and for them to like stop like a predator is not gonna stop until you get consequences with any behavior that's just the way it goes with any behavior that you're engaging in if there is no consequences if there's no accountability if then there's not gonna be any change behavior there's just, there's isn't and the consequence needs to match well the consequence there has to be consequence now do i believe in rehabilitation heck yes i do i was one of the very few people who was in their criminal justice degree classes that would verbally express i do believe that pedophiles can get rehabilitated i really do i don't believe in killing them i don't i believe in breaking the cycle now i i some people might believe in the death penalty in other aspects uh, that's a, that's just that's another like sensitive topic but i believe that they should be given a chance in a sense of rehabilitation and therapy and a lot of work, just like anyone who's dealing with substance abuse problems. I don't like that idea of them trying to normalize it because there's been a lot of talks about that they're trying to give it a label. That it's okay for you to be a Oh, I've seen a video on YouTube. I couldn't believe that that video even exists. But if you believe that, then why not believe the opposite side? Why not say, I want to rehabilitate? <laughs> Like, if you believe in that, then you should believe in the opposite end of rehabilitating a predator and actually giving them the support that they need and stop shaming them and stop putting them down so they can get the help that they need. There's going to be a group of people who are going to want that help and want to stop. And there's going to be a group of people that don't give a crap and they're going to keep doing it. They're just not going to care. Because the reality is, is that whether you have money or not, if you know people who are engaging in this stuff and you guys are working together or it's an organized crime or because you have a lot of money you can pay off people that is the most the most detrimental and i guess sucky part about the whole situation is that the bigger you are the more money you can make and the more hush hush stuff that you can give out to whether it's a victim whether it's a company whether it's whether it's a publishing a company whatever it is you could just pay 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 and if because people are so scared about the backlash that we're going to give the victims. So until we support victims more and more and more as the years goes on, more and more and more victims are going to come forward. And hopefully we can kind of find a balance and lower down the personal behavior. Because in the past, I used to believe, I'm going to end this video like this. In the past, I used to believe in the yin and the yang. You know, there's a 50-50. And I used to use that same scenario with the sun and the moon, with the sun and the moon kind of, or shedding light and then darkness, right, with the environment. And someone could say like, yeah, 50-50, like there's the sun and then when there's darkness, there's no moon and it's just dark. But when I really broke it down, I was like, wait, it's not 50-50. It's actually 75 or 70 and 30. Like 75 light and 30% darkness. It's not, it's, it's wrong because when the moon is out for a certain amount of time, that's more light than darkness. So even in the night, we have light. Even in the darkness, we have light for a certain amount of days or a week or so of the moon just shining bright. Because I know the difference because I'm always outside and I'm always just admiring the sun and the moon. And then it just hit me. I was just like, it's not 50 50 it's 75 and third or in 25 25 percent darkness and 75 percent light so if we really break it down and we stop the whole yin and the yang in the 50 50 percent there should be more light than darkness there should be more light than darkness that's just that <laughs> that's my end conclusion and this is me shedding light to this darkness <laughs> we need to shed light to all of this stereotypes and break down the idea or just throw it away throw away the idea that it's just men 
and it's just a uh, or a stranger danger. It could be anything. It could be stranger danger. It could be your teacher. Like I said, it could be anyone. It could be your counselor. It could be your therapist. It could be anyone who has, can build that rapport, that relationship, that connection with an adolescent and teen. That's why it's so scary with the influence. It's a little tittle tattly because once you build that core connection, some of them are going to be willing to do what they want him to do because of the, ah, the fanning and the, and the lack of parental guidance that they have but this is the thing like i said predators look for children who don't have that parental guidance all the time so that's why when i hear people say in the industry i'm not their mom i've heard that multiple times by many artists okay eminem cardi b recently who else was it oh yeah i remember britney spears in that one time. <laughs> which is true i will validate that it is not the artist's responsibility for what their what their um the parents allow their children to watch. But the thing that sucks is that what is it supposed to do? Turn off all the TV because it's all over the motherfucking news, fudge news. It's all over the news. You see it in the news. You see it everywhere. It's like you're supposed to just turn off everything. Like shh, right now, there's something going on. I don't want you guys to know. What do you think the kids gonna do? <laughs> What are they hiding? Oh no. And they feel they have that, that FOMO feeling of like, I feel left out. <laughs> so I get that point, but also as a musician, as an influencer, as a just a celebrity or someone who knows that they look up to, to you, you should take that in consideration. Like, well, I don't have control over the media. So I can at least validate that to the parents. Like, I apologize that I have no control over the media. You know, it's everywhere. I get it. You know, it's helping my numbers. But then, yet again, all the families need to turn off their TVs and internet just, just so they won't see you doing what, you, what you're doing. It kind of sucks. <laughs> and that, to me, is like, it's a balance of entertainment and what they're showing on whatever type of platform, whether it's a TV or YouTube. That's a... Uh, it's kind of hard for, for a parent to do that. And then, of course, I guess a parent could use that as a teachable moment. You're putting yourself out there to be like, well, I don't care. You know, it's the parent's responsibility. Okay, well, the parent's responsibility, what they're going to end up doing is using you as a poster board of what they shouldn't be doing. And then you lose a fan. You lose a potential fan. <laughs> you lose a potential fan because if they have that relationship with their parents that's healthy, they're going to be like, you know what? My mom's right or my dad's right. I don't want to listen to to Cardi B or Britney Spears or any or anything like that because they didn't validate the hard work that my parents do and they can't control everything in my life you know and and they have the right to vocalize how they feel just how she has the right to vocalize how they feel or the artist feels like so it's like it's a give and take you know I think once consumers and um people who influence media and just the entertainment industry if they start if we start to work more together things will flow but to, what i've noticed with society is that i've noticed that they don't like things to flow like they always want people to clash like there's always has to be a fight with something with someone always there's always has to be some some friction i've noticed that pattern but anyways i'm going off topic this is how i'm gonna end the video hopefully this was informative I probably will be doing another video. Maybe that's a little bit more like concise and not all over the place. <laughs> but hey, that's just how I, the way I am. My brain is like, I think of one thing and then I'm like, oh wait, and then this is this. So <laughs> hopefully it was informative. If you have any questions, please comment down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share this video to anyone that you think might find this useful. I hope everybody's doing okay. And I will talk to you later. Bye. Bye.